Today we're going to start things off with an overview of new Starship updates. Then we'll debrief last weekend's Starlink launch and talk about other Starlink news, catch up on Dragon current events and other miscellaneous happenings with SpaceX, including the upcoming launch schedule, then finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. Lots of news to go over this week on the Starship front. First on Monday, the SN7 test tank that was built out of 304 stainless steel instead of 301 like all the others, was cryo-tested at the launch site in Boca Chica, Texas. And what was particularly neat about this event was that the area wasn't closed off, so spectators like Austin Bernard could get a closer than usual look. Of course, Lab Padre was there to capture the entire test for us as well, including the part when the test tank sprung a leak or sprung a manhole-sized hole, spilling super-chilled liquid nitrogen into the air where it quickly warmed to a gas. Just throw some flex tape on there and everything will be just fine. Make sure you guys check out the description below for links to Austin and Lab's social media pages. Go support what they do for all of us. You know, a wise car once said, don't panic, because this was just another test of failure. And Elon, being the transparent friend of humanity that he is, informed us of the results. The vessel leaked at 7.6 bar, this is a good result and supports the idea of 304L stainless being better than 301. We're developing our own alloy to take this even further. I think he's alluding to the 30X or 30X here. Leak before burst is highly desirable, obviously because a leak is like a warning siren, sounding that something really bad is about to happen, guy. Also concerning this test, SpaceX knew beforehand of a few weak points on this tank, so it's probably capable of more pressure. The second test tank to follow shortly has addressed the weak points. We're not sure exactly when that's going to take place. Heck, the tank hasn't even been built yet that we know of. However, the tank that was just tested has already been repaired. Current road closures are scheduled for Monday and Tuesday, but those may not be for SN7 prototype tank testing. Many are expecting SN5 to be transported down Highway 4 to the test site. This week, it was taken out of the high bay so SN6 could be stacked up to her level. Then it was placed back inside so the installation of its Tesla battery and other hardware could begin. The test stand that awaits it is beefed up and ready to go. A lot of work actually has been going on at the site to keep up with Elon's need for progress. Check out this overhead from RGV Aerial Photography. This was SpaceX and Boca a year and a half ago, and this is SpaceX and Boca now. Obviously, they've been doing well with harvesting resources. That's a strategy game joke. You can find links to RGV's Twitter and Patreon in the description below as well. Go support him so he can do more flyovers for us. SpaceX is also now the proud owner of a new pooch. No, not a Boston Terrier, but a Boston Dynamics robot named Zeus has been spotted at the site going on walks with its handler. I guess you can call it a bomb sniffing robo dog because it will be put to work as a supplement to the drone SpaceX uses to inspect vessels that shouldn't be approached by living people who wish to remain living. A solution SpaceX most likely came up with after last month's SN4 static fire fiasco when some propellant became trapped in the vessel. But look, they even gave Zeus a doghouse. Personally, I believe dogs belong indoors as members of the pack. It is the 21st century, Elon. Suck it up and submit. Let your pet take over your bed like the rest of us. But there is one more piece of Starship news I have for you before we move on. This week, a job posting was listed by SpaceX for an offshore operations engineer position with the company. The responsibility being to design and build an operational offshore rocket launch facility. Elon did later confirm on Twitter that SpaceX is building floating super heavy class spaceports, plural, for Mars, the moon, and hypersonic travel around the Earth. This was to be expected, especially given what we covered in last week's episode concerning super heavy booster development. The sea pad will be located offshore down there in South Texas, and it will be like an oil platform with a hyperloop to transport people back and forth from land. It will also need to be far enough away so as not to bother heavily populated areas. But for those who really want to watch the launches, you could get within a few miles of the spaceport in a boat. You're going to need a bigger boat. There will be many test flights before commercial passengers are carried. First Earth-to-Earth -Earth test flights might be in two or three years, so let's call it five. Moving on to Starlink news, let's debrief last weekend's ninth mission. In the early hours of Saturday morning, SpaceX successfully launched their first small sat rideshare mission, carrying 58 Starlink satellites and three sats for planets, all of which deployed successfully and the booster that carried them made its third landing on the drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. Wow, and we got a live, awesome view. And Touchdown. stage one has landed. Landing <laughs> operators proceed to 11.100 on recovery one and ECF nine. 
Afterward, it made its way back to the cape where the newly upgraded Octagrabber relinquished command, allowing the legs to be retracted and body secured for transport just nine hours after docking, crushing the previous record of 27 hours. Rocket photographer Greg Scott was there to capture the booster's triumphant return and stowing for us. You should follow him on Twitter using his links in the description below where you can take a look at some of his prints, like this one. The launch being a sunrise launch allowed for some pretty epic shots to be taken of the ascent. Here's another one from SpaceX, very cool. The reused fairing halves were not caught by recovery ships Miss Tree and Miss Chief, but were fished out of the water again. They remained intact this time for more potential reuse in the future. Elon tweeting fairing reuse is looking good. Just hours before liftoff, SpaceX published a new feature on their Starlink website that allows users to sign up for Starlink updates and availabilities in their region. SpaceX COO and President Gwen Shotwell recently stated that service could begin rolling out around the world as soon as about 840 satellites are in orbit, which at this rate would be as soon as a couple months from now. Elon tweeted that the latency will be around 20 milliseconds at first, which is better than fiber optic and is designed to run real-time competitive video games. Version 2 will be deployed at a lower orbit and could be as low as 8 milliseconds latency. Board members were recently invited to SpaceX HQ in Hawthorne, California, where they got to set up Starlink terminals and connect to the overhead satellites. Steve Jervinson tweeted it was the simplest out-of-box experience imaginable and shared the Wi-Fi connection strength the SATs provided. Elon has said repeatedly in the past that the goal is to simplify the setup process of the Starlink terminals for future customers, boiling it down to just two instructions, plug in and point at sky. Can be done in either order. For those who are interested, and why wouldn't you be, there's a website you can visit to track every Starlink satellite in orbit in real time. I put the link below. More Starlink rideshare missions are coming. More than 100 spacecraft have been signed up to fly on Falcon 9 since SpaceX launched the rideshare program last year, which includes those from Spaceflight Incorporated. But the next Starlink launch is also a rideshare mission scheduled for June 23rd next week at a more reasonable 5.58 p.m. Eastern time. And the Air Force GPS-3 mission is still on track for June 30th, you can join me live right here for both. However, my live videos haven't been showing up in YouTube search results lately, so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Do it meow. In other news, SpaceX is seeking to spend $10 million on site upgrades at their McGregor test facilities, where they put Merlin and Raptor engines through their paces. The Waco City Council and McLennan County Commissioner's Court voted this week to send $2 million from their Economic Development Court Fund to aid SpaceX's new developments which will include infrastructure improvements like noise suppressors, making water and electric service more reliable, upgrading one rocket road, and a private SpaceX office in Waco. Elon tweeted yesterday that the site is currently reaching for a chamber pressure of 300 atmospheres for their Raptor engine. This week, we received more details concerning the experience the astronauts had riding on Dragon for the Demo 2 launch. Bob and Doug were interviewed from the space station and asked about their trip thus far. And both had nothing but great words for SpaceX, saying that from the time the engines lit, the first two and a half minutes of staging was about like we expected. What I thought was really neat was how sensitive we were to the throttling of the Merlin engines. You could definitely sense that as we broke Mach 1, said Commander Doug Hurley. However, the upper stage Merlin vacuum engine was kind of like driving fast on road gravel. A little bit of vibration, not anything that was really unpleasant, but you certainly knew that there was a powerful engine behind you. Our experience on board uh, Dragon was just really exciting for us. Uh, both uh, the fueling event before we lifted off, it was uh, different than the space shuttle, a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more exciting for us, uh, probably a little bit, just a little bit at least, because it was the first time anyone had done that. Just uh, really exciting for both of us. Uh, I know we were smiling and talking through the th entire uh, way uphill, so it was uh, just a lot of fun for us. The astronauts and the cosmonauts have been putting the Dragon capsule through its paces while docked to the ISS, performing daily wake-ups and check-outs before putting it back into sleep mode, and are about to do a demonstration with four crew members in the vehicle at once. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. We're back with another honorable mention segment on Rocket Lab. Yeah, I know that's twice in a row, but hey, they deserve it. In the wee hours of Saturday morning, Don't Stop Me Now launched from New Zealand and successfully placed payloads for NASA, a U.S. spy sat agency, and various universities into low Earth orbit. Two, one. Thanks. 
And I gotta say, their broadcasting keeps getting better and better. This was the 12th launch of their Electron rocket and the first to launch in months because of the world microbiology situation. But things are picking up at an incredible pace for the launch provider, whose next mission is only two weeks away. If the date holds, it will be a turnaround record for Rocket Lab. The company was also just awarded National Reconnaissance Office contracts for back-to-back -back launches in the spring of 2021. It will require the use of LC-1A, the pad you just saw, and a new nearby pad, LC-1B, to be completed by the end of the year. A rocket will launch from each, just weeks apart if that, to demonstrate its responsive launch capabilities. Rocket Lab is also going to be launching their first rocket from Wallops Island, Virginia, sometime after the next two missions. And mission 17 will be their first attempt at recovering a booster. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. But again, make sure you check out the description below for a list of all the SpaceX enthusiasts that I collaborate with. Definitely support what they do because what they do is provide the community with constant video and images of SpaceX activities. And of course, I'd also like to thank my eccentric members and patrons for their generous support of the channel. Because of them, I can really put in the hours required to make these episodes. If you'd like more space eccentric news in your week with a side of shenanigans to go with it, join us using the links below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a nominal weekend. Until we meet again, Godspeed.